Hello, Sindal here, and welcome to my channel where we talk about the wonders of nature and their amazing benefits for healthy hair, skin, nails, gut health, and so many other things. And today, we are going to talk about what has been taking black women's scalp and hair shaft by storm. None other than CCCA, also known Central Centrifugal Sica Tricial alopecia that's a super duper mouthful but today i'm gonna break down what it is its causes and its treatment because i know it looks like a lot but this is something that can be treated before we get started make sure you go ahead and subscribe here to my channel and then click on that bell notification so you're notified every single time I post another video now CCCA is classified as a hair loss disorder it's also known as hot comb alopecia like so you know who they talking to follicular degeneration syndrome now across the board their studies show that this CCCA primarily affects African American women, and mainly women, not men. It's characterized by the inflammation and scarring of the hair's follicle. Inflammation and scarring of the hair's follicle. This leads to extremely progressive hair loss as displayed in these pictures. This is what CCCA looks like. Now this word here is referring to, referring to scarring. That's what it means scarring so when we're talking about this form of alopecia it is something that forms a scar within the follicle over a long process of certain practices It's extreme inflammation of the hair follicle which leads to complete and total destruction of the hair's follicle and this is why you'll see so many big huge bald spots because the hair's follicle is literally being destroyed daily all of these different and we're gonna get to some of the causes in a second and I need you to stick around to the end because most of the causes of CCCA are self-inflicted let's get into it what leads to the scarring is when you have all of the death and the destruction of the hair's follicle going on from the intense inflammation what happens instead of within the follicle being instead of the follicle being full of like sebum and all of the things that it's supposed to be full of like hair growth cells what it's actually full of within the follicle is scar tissue the, instead of the hair follicles being full of new hair strands it's actually full of scar tissue and now the scarring within the follicle is what leads to the disorder it is the form of scarring alopecia but it's caused by inflammation and bacteria within the hair's follicle and if you OG to my channel you know where I'm about to go so you have to remember as the hair follicle becomes damaged scar tissue replaces all of the hair growth systems that are supposed to be taking place to help you grow healthy hair in the first place so it doesn't matter what you do it doesn't matter what you take it doesn't matter what you put on the scalp sometimes until you're treated properly you cannot induce hair growth because there is scar tissue within the hair follicle because of things you, that you've done that have led to inflammation within the hair's follicle the word cigatrizio is taken from a, the latin word that means scar all right so this whole entire form of alopecia is literally scarring is what it's basically called you have a big huge scar you have a bunch of scar tissue inside of your hair's follicle instead of new hair growth cells now this normally starts at the crown of the head spreads to the center of the scalp and then flowering and blooming out to the point where it becomes something really big large and uncontrollable but at the end of the day this is all from inflammation of the hair follicle and when the hair follicle becomes so inflamed with bacteria with and from a whole bunch of different things which we'll get to in a second the hair shaft the hair follicle can no longer receive oxygen which in return will cause the hair follicle to die off and as it dies off it produces scar tissue and that scar tissue we just talked about what it does now 
at the very beginning you may have a little bit of mild itching a little bit of burning and tenderness in the affected area that's how it'll start in the initial stages but after a long period of time it's going to expand within the follicle it will expand and go from follicle to follicle I need you to remember that you have every person has approximately a hundred thousand follicles on their scalp but every follicle is independent so as you have one follicle or one group of follicles infected in one area it is only a matter of time before that bacteria crawls its way over to the other follicles on the scalp and then it spreads and that is why you'll notice it'll start in one area but then it'll spread out to others if you don't treat this the moment that you feel those initial symptoms the hair loss can be permanent because what will happen is if that scar tissue if a enough scar tissue is able to build up within each follicle there will be one point where that scar tissue will not be able to be removed like it'll that's where it'll be now that'll it'll be new scarring just like sometimes if it goes if it'll go if the scarring goes too far on your face or something like that you'll get a permanent mark on your skin so you really really want to be cautious of that because it's a very very big possibility that you will get that if you let this go on too long and you keep on with the practices that lead to CCCA then this could be something permanent that cannot be reversed I need you guys to remember some things as it pertains to the hair cannot be reversed certain things you just may have to put a wig on for the rest of your life so I'm trying to tell you now so you won't be a bald head skitter diddle with no hair in the mouth I'm trying Scientists are still trying to understand the initial causes of CCCA, right? And the main reason why it's a little harder for a lot of scientists to understand the initial causes of CCCA is because most of the time, by the time you go see your dermatologist, the practices and all of those things have already been done, right? All of the damage has already been done. So it becomes extremely important that you learn the that you learn your body and that you learn the anatomy of the human scalp and what your hair does and does not need and I'm sorry a lot of people are not going to want to hear this but I've been preaching it forever there are a lot of practices that we have in the black community that lead to so many different people having CCCA this form of scarring alopecia is so common and one thing that is crazy about it scientists are finding that the amount of people that are not African American or the 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 amount of people that are not of African descent that have this form of scal scarring alopecia is a very very small percentage and it's to the point where scientists can almost say that this is about a uh, 80% or 89% a form of alopecia that is specifically engineered to only belong to black people like they don't want to say that but that's what they say it's only black people that's getting ccca white people we ain't getting that not we i'm saying that's what they saying i'm not a white person let's get into the different things that lead to this form of alopecia y'all not going to hear this but you the one that's here hairstyling is almost the number one leading cause for ccca because when we are doing hairstyling when we are styling our hair most of the time the main objective for us is to be able to lay our hair down get flyaways gone we're packing our scalps full of products full of oils and full of butters that block the follicle I said all the time so yes at the beginning everything's okay at the beginning it seems like everything is cool grease in the scalp is not a big deal you know whenever you go and get your hair braided or if you get a weave or any type of style that puts any type of tension on your hair you know how you get ready to go ahead and pop a Tylenol before you get ready to go get your hair braided or your hair is hurting and your head is throbbing after you get your hair braided so you pop a Tylenol so you'll ignore the feeling that is one of the leading causes of CCCA in black women why that 
pain that you're feeling, that throbbing that you're feeling is your hair follicle trying to tell you that it is getting ready to detach from your blood supply. So when you take a pain reliever, what you are doing is numbing that pain. And by numbing the pain, you are now not aware and completely oblivious to the feeling of your follicle detaching itself from the blood supply. And if the follicle is slowly being detached from the blood supply, then what is going to happen is slowly but surely, the hair's follicle is going to start developing different forms of scar tissue. This is why finding a professional braider that really, really knows the scalp and that doesn't use a whole bunch of heavy butters and oils on the scalp is so important. Also, remember, whenever we are styling our hair, one of the main things that we do to style our hair, let's be realistic. This is coming from a person who is has been a licensed cosmetologist for over a decade, well over a decade. So when it comes to styling products, every professional is different, right? I wasn't one of the professionals that used a bunch of heavy butters and a bunch of heavy gels and things of that nature. But if you are a person who cannot style their hair or cannot go a day without packing on heavy butters and heavy thick edge controls, like if you go to a braider who has to take a whole bunch of edge control in between every single braid down the line, and a lot of people don't want to hear this, especially braiders because it makes the braids perfect, but down the line, you will cause your client to be a to begin to form CCCA because by filling the cuticles up with a thick petroleum based product, what you are doing is blocking that oxygen flow. And upon blocking that oxygen flow, you limit the scalp's ability to get to produce new skin tissue. Your body will begin to think that something's wrong and then scar tissue forms, all right? So when you have the combination of your follicles full with product just to get the braids in and your follicle is in pain because of all of the tension from the braids that's a whole nother thing right and then not even just that remember a lot of people like when we're thinking about CCCA it's in the middle of the hair right so here on the screen you can see but one thing I want us to remember there are two things that we always do I'm a black woman is something that I'm guilty of as well and when I learned it's something that I have to change myself right so we not only do we pack our hair and our follicles full of products that completely cut off oxygen flow we also tie our hair up after we put those products on right after we put those products on we then tie our head down super tight and think about it most of the time we're tying it just around the edges so this part here is what's actually being squeezed you're tying it up around the sides and pulling and this part in the middle of your head is what's being pushed up like all of the blood is being forced up to the middle of the head when we're tying a scarf super duper tight and this is a pattern that we have all the time and it blocks oxygen flow and it limits oxygen flow and it causes the blood to rush and then decrease in unnatural ways all across the scalp. You have to think about it. Most of us walk around with our scarves on all the time. Then if you're a person who wears a whole lot of wigs and things of that nature, all of these different things go into the follicle being scarred by blocking oxygen flow. And that is one of the main things you have to think about it as a black most black women walk around with either wigs on 24 7 or with a scarf on 24 7 even if you do it um as for like protective as a way of for protective styles like for myself for an example in my last video i showed you guys how i do my hair on a regular basis this is after a silk press right so i literally have this on to do this video and to do a couple of other work things but regardless of what i'm doing every night before I go to bed I'm gonna go ahead comb through my hair and I'm sleeping without a scarf on because when you're sleeping with a scarf on you're sleeping with a really really tight scarf on squeezing the middle part of your head all throughout the night so it's 
like when you really really think about it and you break everything down and do the process of elimination and look at our patterns it's really really easy to see why this part of the head is the place where all of the damage is happening again another thing we love to do top knot buns there when I was standing behind the chair the majority of my clients if they were not seeing me their hair was either just like all over their hair wash and go or they were doing like a really really tight top knot and they would tie their their hair in a scarf super duper tight so this part of their hair in the middle of their head is where all of the tension is this is where all the tension is this is where the pressure point is so again when you think about our patterns our habits our hairstyling the ways that we think that we're supposed to style our hair it does it another thing that really really messes us up and y'all are not gonna like it when I say this is crochet most people think that crochet braids are like the best thing that anybody could do but it's actually the opposite if you really think about it most people who do crochets on a regular basis after a while they end up noticing like thinning in certain areas of their hair and this is because of the tension and the pressure points again and the constant rubbing from that fiber on the hair's follicle remember that as you have crochet braids no matter how the style is everything is falling and draping going downward so all of the rubbing all of the tension anything is done like this right anything that you do is be the rubbing and tension is being done over this portion and it's not something that is allowing you to wash your hair or to cleanse the follicle and to cleanse the scalp on a regular basis it's going to be chemicals if you are a person who is not licensed and you do not know how to properly use chemicals in the hair then it is something that can lead to CCCA now a lot of people love talking about relaxers and how relaxers cause cancer but what people People fail to do is read the entire study what causes what causes cancer and relaxers and all of these other things and fibroids and all of these other things are, is the relaxer not being applied properly right so if you don't add relaxer on if, if chemicals are not added to the hair properly absolutely it can be damaging the same thing for lightener and the same thing for any type of permanent color if it's done improperly absolutely it will damage the hair that's why it's illegal for somebody who hasn't been to cosmetology school to do it because there are certain procedures that you do have to follow all right and even as a licensed cosmetologist if state board walks in and see that you're doing something um opposed to the way that you're really supposed to be doing it you can get shut down so it is very very important when you are using chemicals the wrong way what will end up happening is the chemicals theirself can end up burning the follicle which creates scar tissue and if enough scar tissue is created within the hair's follicle then again like we talked about before there will be no new hair growth cells being produced because instead of new hair growth cells being produced within the hair's follicle during the androgen phase there's a bunch of scar tissue there right so if you use chemicals right so that the chemicals don't burn the hair follicle or they don't cause uh, chemical damage and chemical burns then you don't have anything to worry about but it's so important that you actually know how to use chemicals before you put them in your hair this is why it's so important that if you're going to use chemicals if you're going to go do things without a perfect professional go at least go to the kind of professionals place like Sally's Cosmoprof is the professional store that you have to go into the only time you can go in there is if you have a cosmetology license barber license esthetician you know all that stuff but Cosmoprof and Sally's is owned by the same company and Sally's is the consumer version of Cosmoprof so if you just have to get hair color go to Sally's and get a developer and get get a developer and the color of your choice and do it like that do not get box relaxer inside of the store because box relaxer is made with metallic dyes and when you go when you go to get a color from Sally's you can shop for the color based on your porosity so uh, with high porosity hair your cuticle is already open so I can use like 20 volume on your hair to get color right but if you have low porosity hair it's hard 
hard for your cuticle to open so I could get away with using about 30 to 40 volume on your hair depending on what color we're going to but in reverse you'll cause a lot more harm than good and what's crazy about color from uh, the, the the beauty supply store like box hair color not from the beauty supply store from like Walmart or CVS that hair color is made for all porosities right and not made for all porosities but they just have it at the highest it can possibly go so that way no matter what is gonna lift right so for low porosity hair it may be a little bit too much for high porosity hair it may be way too much for medium porosity hair it may bust your cuticle wide open you just never know so this is why it's really important for you to know what you're doing because chemicals being used improperly can lead to excessive scarring of the hair's follicle which is CCCA. Number three is a whole bunch of genetics. Now your genetic predisposition is really really complicated because a lot of people think that that means like oh my mama had it so I'm automatically gonna have it. That's not really what that means. What that really means is that genetically your genetic pool, your family has the same type of practices that lead to the same type of results genetically. Like for example you may find the same uh, uh, the same pattern of like diabetes or heart disease in a family but you'll also notice that this family eats the same way like everybody eats the same type of recipes for breakfast lunch and dinner the same type of snacks everybody kind of eats in front of the TV or whatever the the patterns are they'll be the same patterns that are passed down from generation to generation recipes passed down from generation to generation so when they're talking about genetic predisposition that's what that means at any point in time you can change the way that your genetic pool is moving by changing your patterns the way you eat the way you're taking care of your hair the way you're taking care of your body your skin your nails and all of that stuff so you're not really like locked in when somebody says when somebody says or when something says genetic predisposition that doesn't mean that that's going to be the place that you're stuck in forever that's not what that means Number four, some studies have shown that CCCA may be contributed, may be contributed to auto autoimmune diseases. Some different autoimmune diseases will cause the body to get inflamed and to get different or excessive uh, uh, excessive times of inflammation within the follicle or just within the body in general. Right? Sometimes it doesn't really have anything to do with anything from an outside source or any pulling or tugging or anything like that it can just really really have a whole lot to do with the way that you're doing your hair I also want you to remember too if you are straightening your hair the wrong way the reason they called it like oh hot comb is because sometimes if you do it wrong if you're not pressing the hair properly and you're sitting the pressing comb on the scalp for too long you can end up causing follicle damage and if you burn the scalp too many times there'll be scar tissue just like if you get a relaxer when you do your relaxer at home you're not basing the scalp properly you get scabs in the scalp and that scab when it heals up it leaves behind itself scar tissue so the more scabs you have on the scalp the more scar tissue builds within the follicle and the more scar tissue builds within the follicle the more bald spots you have and that's basically what CCA is and that if you think that you have CCCA that you go in to see a dermatologist I know a a lot of people don't want to go in to see a doctor. I am not a dermatologist. I really, really, really think that it's so important. If you are a person who is experiencing burning and really, really excessive itching within the hair's follicle, I really, 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 especially if you already got insurance, if you got insurance, go in, see your dermatologist, and they can just go ahead, run a scan biopsy on your scalp, and tell you what type of bacteria is there. And then, what's your dermatologist? tells you what bacteria is there trust them I have so many clients that book one-on-one -on -one consultations with me after they went to see a dermatologist just for me to turn right back around and tell them everything that their dermatologist told them so make sure that you go in and seek medical help because once your CCCA gets to a certain point 
like it is not reversible and I know that may be hard for some people to accept but everything cannot be repaired that is why so many cosmetologists are like get a trim don't grease your scalp don't do all of this stuff and the reason that I'm telling you to do it is because you'll do it for a long time and everything works until it doesn't and one day once it stops working you'll start to see the excessive balding the excessive thinning coming and when you do the math most of the women that are getting CCCA are in their late 50s all right their late 50s early to mid 40s and when you go talk to these women most of them tell you that their patterns prior to them being diagnosed with CCCA was greasing their scalp on a regular basis. They always had their hair in tight braids. They would wear box braids all the time and different things like that. Probably wearing tight scarves. Like everybody's practices prior to having CCCA all line up with each other. So if you want to know what if I told you that the things that you're looking at is protective styles and the things that you're looking at as ways to protect your hair are actually the things that are hurting your hair the most. Like you only finger detangling, you not combing your hair, letting your hair air dry and all of those different things do a lot more harm to the hair shaft than good. If you want to get a hold to your CCCA of your CCCA, then all you need is some gunpowder zen, okay? Gunpowder in is one of my favorite blends and it's my new favorite blend as it pertains to blocking DHT and killing bacteria and inflammation within the gut and within the body right so gunpowder zen has three different herbs in it the first herb is gunpowder green tea the second herb is peppermint and the third herb is spearmint and these three herbs together are a powerhouse that comes from the way that they roll it right it's actually a really big leaf and for them to transport it in a good like a nice little price on you know what I'm saying they roll it up and it looks like gunpowder pellets right for us so that's what they call it gunpowder but when you steep them they pop out to be like this bigger flower and they're absolutely beautiful and make sure you head over to this video so you can learn all about it because gunpowder zen has a video all to itself so watch it now